here, and that is Mr. Ryan Day. Ryan Day is fired up right now. I mean, he is, uh, I, I would say, livid. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's too broad of a term. Maybe that's too, uh, too nice right now. Um, he said today, you work your whole life for an opportunity to coach a team like this. This team is special, and it's special because it's talented. It is special because it has leadership. It is special because of the character. It could have been a once-in-a-lifetime team. This quarantine, this virus was not going to get in their way. Now, he, uh, he said it was an awful meeting Tuesday when he and Smith informed the players about the postponed season. Um, and then uh, along with that, he said that he wants an eight- or nine-game season pushed back until January. Right, he wants to start this thing up in early January and get this thing in. But he has not heard a word from the Big Ten, and that should let you know exactly what's going on. The Big Ten canceled, and they have not spoken to anybody about what is going on. They have not let anybody know anything about what they are doing, and people are pissed. They are irate about this. And now, we all know that they are not going to have a season. In January, like it's just not going to happen. So I, it, I would love to be wrong about this, but I don't believe that I am. So, if, Chris, give me, give me your thoughts here. Um, why in the world has the Big Ten not reached out to all of these different institutions and at least given them something? Because they don't have anything to say to them. They've talked to their presidents. They, 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 this is a job where the presidents need to reach out to their employees. It's not the commissioner's job to have these conversations. If I, it's not the Big Ten's office to call all 14 schools and have 14 individual conversations with each 14 pissed off coach. Well, but that's at just some... not there. That's just not. This wasn't their decision. It was a decision from the presidents. The president needs to call their damn employees. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm with you there. Who made I, um... the decision? Well, I mean, obviously, it was the presidents. Okay, then that's who needs to call Ryan. Ryan doesn't need to be mad at the at the conference. Why are they? What, what are they? Have well, to do because with the, because the conference has no plan. They have but no the, idea right the now. The conference has no. You're right. The conference has no plan. But that's I get that. Here's the deal: trying to tell them what they're gonna do, not going over very well. Okay, and then you want then you're then you're wondering why they won't reach out to you because you're being a dick. Okay. This is, this is where we are in life is something didn't go our way. And so instead of trying to work with the people that we strongly disagree with, we just call them out on social media, throw our hands up and say, I'm going to make this demand, this demand, this demand. And if I don't get it, then, you know, I'm going to whine, bitch, and moan. And I'm going to throw a fit. No, you have to work with these people, okay? We're going to get to the same thing with Nebraska, all right? People want to kick Nebraska out. Just because they, Nebraska tried to do something, all right? Yeah. And Ohio State, by the way, is doing the exact same thing. They are, they have talked and said that they are doing everything they can and they are pushing, trying to play this season. Um, yeah. You know, which is, which is kind of crazy because. You had a fight. You yeah. have a disagreement. This is a bad situation. It's not going the way you want. It's not going the way I want either. But you cannot go to the conference office and to, and start making demands because you didn't get the way you wanted. Yeah, uh, this is what I, he, I understand the frustration. I understand the being pissed off, but you got to work with these people. This is uh, and, this is and what he told not ESPN. calling you. I'm sorry, Your Highness. I know that you win the conference every year, this but is, they do not bend to your will. This is what uh, Day said to ESPN. He said, uh, "We are still exploring all those options on playing this fall." This thing is moving, it's changing, and we are looking at everything to play. I promise you that. He said, uh, some of the things Nebraska has asked about are things we continually ask about as well. We play non-conference games year in and year out, so in this unique situation, we're just trying to find out what exactly the conference's stance is on this, what it means with TV contracts and everything else. We are asking all of those questions. Um, yeah. I mean, he said, it's not a bubble, but it's close to it here that we created for our guys. There was a lot of hard work put into this. That's so, and he's right on that. And we've been talking about that forever. This yeah. is why we think these football players are safer inside the world of football for college on those campuses and and playing one another is because they really are kind of a bubble. You you don't go to a lot of 
campus parties and find the football players hanging out. Now, I guess you do sometimes, but it's real easy to tell them, hey, guys, we can't do that this year. And, and I actually think a lot of these kids are doing a pretty damn good job of being compliant. Yeah, when you have an incentive, when you have that carrot, like we talked about, it, it's of, it, of a season. Thing, Major League Baseball is doing it. If you get caught going out, listen, you can do that all you want. You're I now mean, suspended. The, yeah, the Without Indians, pay, uh, you're going you're gonna to pay consequences. The Indians sent a guy home and had to rent him yes. a car and just made him drive home. Yep. Like, drive your ass <laughs> back because you are acting a fool. Yeah. And we're not going to do it, and we're not going to allow it. In college, it's real easy to do the same thing. If you get caught out at a party, sorry, you left the bubble, bro. Yep. You don't get to come back. You got to self quarantine. We got to get several positive t- or negative tests from you, and then you can come back in the fold. And when you come back, there's going to be discipline. Yep, there will be consequences. Period. Yes. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, but but I think I think a lot of these kids would honestly, if we gave them the right to play football, they would comply. I really believe that. Yeah, I, I believe that as well. I do think there will be some idiots, but yes. oh yeah, there's always going to be some. Yeah. But that's when you got to stand your ground. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Uh, let's dive into the comments real quick. Um, Matt Miller said, I just hate that every aspect of the country has played the middle game. If masks help open everything up and require them, if kids are living in dorms, in-person classes, etc., then sports can be played. Uh, he said, the Marlins played with people having the coronavirus in baseball against the Phillies, and the Phillies had zero player cases. That is true. Um, yes. Damian, is, now, it, baseball, again, not exactly the same as football, but... You know they're still close to each other, but basically everybody is trying to do the right thing. Yeah, no, you're you're right, you're right. Uh, Damian Estrada jumps in. We love our boy Damian. Sorry if anybody takes this the wrong way, but I don't think that politics is the problem. Yes, there is corruption, but I think it's sports that is keeping us blind from fixing the problem this world has. Just saying, I I don't necessarily agree with that. I understand where you're coming from. I do think. The political I don't know sides. How sports is hurting any. Uh, sports definitely isn't making it worse. Well, he, he thinks that sports is keeping us blind from from fixing these problems. Like mm. we're we're not just saying that we should have college football because we want college football. That is not the only reason. No, like and I don't. Are, but I, obviously, I don't think I'm blind to anything either. Yeah. So but we we do our best to look at uh, at every side of every argument, and that's you know if we if we find out some new information and we're wrong about something. We reserve the right to change our minds about things. I think any yes. smart person would. Yes. But in this situation, now what the Big Ten is doing by leaving the football pro or football uh, operations and whatnot open, and they're still going through 20 What's hours What's strange week, about that is, is now, so all the football operations yeah. are open, so these kids are still going to work out together. They're still going to train together. They're still going to watch film together. They're going to do all the things that they would normally do in football, but that three hours on Saturday when they have to do something with another team that's been doing the same thing as them, that's that's where they're dangerous. That's it's what weird. I can't wrap my mind around. That doesn't make sense. That science doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, it's, they, they get to do it together on campus, but not off campus against they're somebody else. They're living in the like bubble, it's... but that three hours where they're still in a bubble – with another team that's been in a bubble is, is all of a sudden dangerous. That's what doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's, that's what I don't understand. Now, I'm again, I'm fine with no games. If the players are still being taken care of like this, because they are uh, supposedly still going to have the same number of tests and all that kind of stuff, which another source of mine said that the testing was that the Big Ten and the the Power Five conferences where they're doing the the two tests per player per week, you know, all that kind yeah. of mess, and then they can, if they show symptoms, they get tested. If they feel weird, if yep. if they feel like they might have been close to somebody, they can get, you know, tons of tests. They're spending $150,000 a month just on tests. Yep. Like, that doesn't include all the medical personnel, all the different things that they've had to put in place, like, et cetera. Like, it's a lot of damn money. So if they are still planning on doing that, cheers to it. You know, yep. that's that's perfectly reasonable. Like, we, we don't have an argument with it from that side if they are continuing these things. I just find it hard to believe that if you don't have your typical income coming in, that you ain't going to make some cuts. And who knows what it might be, but there will be budget cuts at some point. Somebody's going to lose their—a bunch of people are going to lose their jobs, et cetera. And that's where it becomes a, a massive deal. Um, Levi jumps in. He said, they faked a plan with a schedule release— and then six days later, canceled everything. What changed? Warren was asked this directly multiple times, and he dodged the question every time. 
I don't have a good answer for that. Uh, the only thing that, that changed was the presidents got together and voted. Yeah. That's it. Like, they released a schedule before they got a vote from, from the presidents. So, and I'll, let, let's, let's dive into the myocarditis thing for just a minute. And I know that this isn't a, my, a, a Ryan Day topic here. But the, the myocarditis thing, the SEC and the ACC both have known about this because it is common with every virus. We talked about this on the show yesterday, and by God, I don't mean to get super fired up about it, but the SEC and ACC have already implemented things into whether or not a player can return based on echocardiograms, uh, different cardiac stress tests, like all of these different things to check on the heart before they are ever allowed to go back and practice after they have tested positive for COVID. Like, this was already built in. Just because those jackasses elsewhere didn't even think about it doesn't mean that it wasn't known. This is, that's why all, I swear to God, a college football commissioner, a college football leadership group of some sort that was over all of this, which is, I guess, what the NCAA is supposed to be, but obviously they're not. Like The problem is, is nobody's over the president. And, and there's no communication. There's just none. Like, it, I, I, I have gotten so worked up over the last three days. It, it, so I, I wear this Fitbit, right? And it tests, like, my, my heart rate levels, and it lets me know, <laughs> like, at different points when I've gotten a little, uh, a little too fired up. And it just irritates the ever-loving piss out of me to hear these kind of things like it's something new. Like the, the myocarditis stuff is something new. It's not. It's just not. And it's not to say that it's not a risk. It obviously is. But it's not one that wasn't known. Like Matt Miller uh, said, also 18 to 24-year-olds, 0.02% death rate. Now, it, But death is not what we're talking about. We're talking about it having long-term health issues. Like that's, that's where it becomes a problem. And, you know, either way, he said, uh, you had a better chance of dying in a car accident. Biggest study for kids and coronavirus in the world from the U.K. said kids rarely, if ever, spread it. I would tend to agree with that, except there are other studies that have shown uh, other things about it. So, you know, I mean, in in Florida, they had over 100,000 kids under the age of 15 that got it just in July. So, I mean, you know, uh, what are we we doing? Or not 100,000, whatever it is. It's some massive number in the United States. Matt Huey said, why hasn't Elon Musk created a system like Avatar where players use Avatar bodies to play the game of football? <laughs> if Eli, if you were to ask Elon, he'd tell you it's coming. It's hey, coming. That's a really good idea, actually. Oh, God. I, I'd watch idea. that. It's a sci-fi world. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Levi Hamilton said, well, I mean, hell, we, we do it with Madden all the time anyway. I mean, oh, God. Uh, Levi Hamilton said, plus that 0.02% all have comorbidities. These are pretty healthy kids. Yes, that's true. Um, and, and that's another good thing about the football program, right, is they are all tested. They all have physicals. They all run through all these different things. Sometimes somebody slips through the crack with something that you did not know that they had, right? And it's just a, a flukish kind of thing. But it is very, very rare that that ever happens. So uh, Matt Miller said, uh, just look at the data. It's sad that even the medical community has become politicized. I would also bet the lifting and indoor practices spread it worse than an outdoor game under the sun. Uh, shake my head. Yeah, no, that's 100% true. I mean, that indoor air for sure. Joseph Gomez, sports is trying to adapt, but you can see differences in leadership and mindsets across the conferences and states, not political. Um, he said the NCAA just cash their TV checks and make sure nobody kills each other. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's, the NCAA just handles the college basketball tournament. Like, that's it. That's a, you know, they, they do nothing with football. Uh, other than when somebody gets caught breaking the rules, then they are sure to show up. If somebody sleeps on somebody's couch, they will uh, be the first ones there. Uh, Huey said, be careful with COVID testing. If someone comes to your door saying those... T- <laughs> I don't know why I start reading his stuff. Darren McArdle jumps in. He said, hi, y'all. Hi, Darren. Good to see you in here. Uh, and then Matt Miller said, herpes, which affects 30% of the population, causes myocarditis. They also play football. I would bet that CTE affects them more by the time they're 60 than Corona ever did. Well, I mean, if, if we're talking about Antonio Brown, uh, it might be before 60. So, you know, either way. Um, let's dive off of that stuff. Let's talk about something a little more interesting. 